Prime Minister John Key has been travelling the Pacific, pledging money and sweetening relations with Pacific leaders. He called the jaunt a goodwill mission, but it's been criticised as a promotional tour ahead of the election. International Relations Professor Robert Patman joins us to discuss the venture. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. Do you think John Key's trip was a thinly veiled fishing expedition for national votes? Well, I think it certainly had its promotional aspects, and one commentator in the Herald described it as a shameless campaign trip. And it's true that uh, John Key distributed uh, enhanced financial aid for the three countries which he visited. Samoa got uh, an additional $1 million, uh, Tonga got $5 million, and Niue got uh, $1.25 million. So he was distributing largesse everywhere he went, mm. and he made uh, constant references to the forthcoming election. So I'm not surprised it's been interpreted in that way. So this, this election is about four months off. Do you think? Yeah, his, September, yeah. Do you think his schmoozing will pay off? Well, we have a sizable uh, population from the Pacific, and so there'll be lots of people in this country with connections with those three states that he visited. So it's possible, and um, I think he was drawing people's attention to how well New Zealand's done under his leadership, in his opinion. And uh, I think all these things um, uh, politicians see as positives in the build up to a big event. Mm. Did any major developments between New Zealand and those Pacific countries come out of this trip? I wouldn't say major developments, but there were some interesting nuances. For example, when Mr. Key was in Tonga, he warned Pacific Island states not to be too lured by loans from China. He said that um, uh, these countries, these island states, should seek grants rather than loans which have long-term implications. Mm. But uh, Tonga's Prime Minister would have none of it. He said that uh, China provided uh, loans at relatively low interest rates, unlike the Western commercial banks, which were available in some of those island states. And uh, these countries were interested in development, and they would seize all the, the means at their disposal to do so. Mm. Um, having said that, Mr. Key stressed he was comfortable with China's role uh, in the Pacific, but it is a really enhanced role compared with recent years, and that's something that New Zealand and Australia are both trying to get used to. Is our relationship with the Pacific changing? I think it is. Uh, it's changing um, because of China's growing role in the Asia Pacific and also in the Pacific Island states. Um, this has been a change in the last 10 years. Uh, the United States in turn is responding to that. So New Zealand finds itself in, in very good relations with both the United States and China. And of course, New Zealand has to play quite a delicate role. It wants to retain quite a prominent region, uh, regional role. I mean, 70% of New Zealand's overseas aid goes to the Pacific Island states. Do you, so, think, do you think that we will continue to dominate international relations with the Pacific? Um, I think it's going, to be our, it's going to continue to be seen by politicians in this country, not least the present Foreign Minister, Mr McCulley, as our priority area, hmm. sort of our near abroad, to use a Russian expression. Yeah, I think it's going to be our neighbourhood, but we're going to have to get used to the fact it won't only be the United States, which is another major extension in the neighbourhood, and Australia, it's also going to be China. Professor of International Relations, Robert Patman, thank, thank you, you so much, much for your time. Thank you. After the break on 39.